Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am working on another rag quilt and since I've already done a tutorial for that, my Christmas rag quilt tutorial, I'm not doing another whole tutorial, but I am going to show you a little trick that I have done. I am going to make the quilt raggedier, or raggier, more raggy, more raggedy. <laughs> I want extra frilly stuff between my squares. If you go back and look at the previous tutorial, you will see that I had backing, batting, and then an upper layer. So when those get sewed together and I fringe it, we're cutting through just four layers of fabric total in between the panels. I thought it would be cool if I could add another layer in there, but I didn't want to have to cut a whole entire 12 inch square to add in the middle of the sandwich. So what I have done right now is I have my backing, I have my batting, and I have my upper layer, but I've cut some one inch strips to go along all the outside edges, and that is going to be sewn in. So it only takes four inches of fabric, four inches wide by whatever length your blocks are, mine are 12. That's going to give me extra fabric to cut in between. That might sound confusing, so let me just show you. Okay, this is the backing that I'm using for this quilt. And another tip, if you use fabric that has no right side or wrong side, how easy it is to just plop your fabric down and not worry about making a mistake with that. So this is my fabric. And now you see, I want to add a row of flannel to the edge so that when I trim the fabric, I'll have some extra puffiness in there. So what I do is I just go all around my base. Doesn't matter which order. You don't have to worry about precision cuts because it's all getting fringed anyway. And now it makes it really easy to center my batting. I'm just going to throw my batting there in the middle. And then I'm going to add my top. And then like with my other tutorial that I showed you, I pin my corners. And now I'm going to sew my X, and it's going to catch the corners of that flannel. Now you'll see that the yellow strips are indeed attached at the corners. Kind of hard for you to see. And now I'll show you what it looks like when you put two of these together. I need a camera crew! I don't know why I'm so hot. Not that kind of hot. Another tip, I'm making a quilt with 24 panels and it was just all a variety of different prints. So what I did is I made 20 of those panels and I laid those out and then I got to look at that and see Maybe what kind of other color should I add? Or do I maybe need a darker panel here or there? So my last four blocks that I make, I know I'm making something that will fit in good. There's nothing worse than getting all your blocks made and then you just don't have a good way to put them together. But don't even worry about it. So this is what I did. Now at this point you can see, that, you know, this is not attached in the centers, but it is attached at the corners. When you do like I showed you in the tutorial, when you put your two panels together, just stitch about a three quarters of an inch in. You just make sure that you caught the flannel on both sides. And then look, when I fringed it, I made it raggedier. I think it's raggedy because we have Raggedy Ann and Andy. So we don't say Raggy Ann. That's not nice. <laughs> so it makes the quilt raggedier. Now I haven't completed this quilt yet, so it has not been through the wash. But what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and upload this video now. And when this final project is done and this is all raggedy, I will put it at the end of this video in one of the little uh, end card boxes or whatever. So go look for that. That is it. I just wanted to show you this tip. I think that those of you who make rag quilts will like it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Air! I need air!